You're tuned in to The Eva Melton Show, where spirituality meets real life. Well, happy Sunday. Good morning, Birmingham. This is Eva Melton. I'm so glad that you chose to share a portion of your Sunday morning with me. I hope that you're up getting ready to go to Sunday school or head into the house of worship, whether that's physically or virtually, however you find your way to worship God today. I hope that that goes well and that you arrive at your destination safely. So I'm excited about today's show. We're going to be talking about the God factor and black women's rest, the God factor and black women's rest. And so just to let you know that the first part of this show is going to be a snippet from where I preached on this topic at the Firm Foundation Church here in Birmingham. And the second half of the show, I'm bringing in communal voices, one being a literary healer here in Birmingham and a therapist that is in Tuscaloosa to hear more about this topic from the community's perspective. So just tune in. So we're going to lean in right now to that Sunday morning message that was preached last month. The book of Matthew chapter 11. And we're going to start at verse 25, but we will emphasize verse 28 through 30, Matthew chapter 11. And I want you to find it in your Bible so that you can read along with us. Okay. And I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your grace, gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Verse 28, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want to reemphasize this. And you will find rest for your souls. You know, sometimes as we go through earth school, go through life, I love to call it earth school because it's all about learning lessons and we're often presented with challenges uh, in fluid situations that require our adaptability. We have our highs and we have our lows. And sometimes if we are not intentional or careful, we will think that we are on this journey alone. This message, today's message is to remind all of us that whatever position you found yourself in in this season of life, that you must remember to include God in the equation. Include God in the equation. How many of you know that the equation looks differently, that the sum total looks differently when you include God in the equation? Whether you found yourself on the highest mountain, wondering how did I get here? Do I even deserve to be here? Oh, you found yourself in the lowest of the lowest valleys, wondering if you'll ever exit such tough terrain. Whatever perspective that you choose, whatever lens that you put on, I want to remind you to include God that you are not alone, that God did not leave you holding the bag, that you have a silent partner an unseen help that is going before you, making ways out of no ways. I was listening to Abraham Hicks last night and, and they said it this way, that you have friends upstream, that you have friends upstream, unseen help that you cannot see working things out on your behalf. Today, the spirit of God is calling us to clarify our perspective just to clarify our perspective. So I want to remind you, yes, you are powerful, but you are not the source of power. Yes, you are light, but you are not the source of light. You are strong, but you are not the source of strength. 
that in everything that you do, you must consider the God factor. You must consider the God factor that there's something, someone beyond you, and that has allowed you to be a channel, a medium, a conduit of the spirit of God in this earth realm. Mm, when you get done trying to figure everything out, when you get done trying to do everything in your own strength, may you ease into rest and into grace and remember that God did not leave you holding the bag. Yes, some other people might have left you holding the bag, but one thing is certain that you're never alone and that God has not left you holding the bag. Come unto me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Those are the words of Jesus. I don't know what kind of Bible you have, but if you see words in red, those are the words of Jesus. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Today is just a declaration of what the Spirit of God reminded me of this week. I won't do an in-depth analysis of the text. I just simply want to declare and encourage Black women this morning to rest. Sometimes it seems like it's groundbreaking affirmations and statements to tell us that we can rest, that we can lean into God, and God encourages us to rest, that you will find rest for your soul. At the Firm Foundation, there's been this phrase, I really don't know how it came to be, but it's been coming up in our conversations. It's been coming up on our Facebook statuses. It's been coming up in my sermons and I love it. And it's ease and grace. We're in a season of ease and grace. And what I wanna say to you this morning is that everything does not have to be so hard. Everything does not have to be so intense and that we don't have to operate in our own strength. That we don't have to operate in our own strength. If we think about a sailboat, once it lets up its sail, that's the vision that God has given me now. Once it lets up its sail, it allows the wind. It's just going with the waves and the wind kind of guiding it along. The person just readjusts the sail determine what direction it wants to go, but if there's no straining and no striving, but the elements just kind of push the boat, pushes the boat where it needs to go. And I call that being in the flow of light, of life, being in the flow of life, that we can live life in the flow. How do you know that you're in the flow? That's the question I get a lot. How do you know that you're in the flow? of life. Here's one way. There ought to be things showing up on your path. People, things, ideas, creativity, um, things showing up on your path and flowing into your streams that you didn't have to labor and sweat for. You're listening to The Eva Melton Show. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back from the break, you'll be hearing from our guest communal voices on today.
Well, welcome back to the Eva Melton Show. We're back from the break. And on this segment, we're going to continue the discussion about black women's rest and the rest that Jesus has to offer us. So now we're going to hear from some of our communal voices. First up is Salam Green. Salam is a literary healer located here in Birmingham, Alabama, but her work is global. And we want to hear what Salam has to say about Black women's rest. Well, Salam, this morning on the show, we've been talking about the concept of rest. Um, Jesus tells us in Matthew 11, you know, come to me, all that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I pastor majority Black women, and sometimes it feels like, you know, when we tell Black women, hey, and, and, and for myself as well, that it seems so revolutionary to tell us that, hey, that you can rest, that God's got it, like you don't have to put your hands on everything, every issue in our community is not yours to figure out. Um, have you seen or observed cases of this? And if so, you know, what do you think some of this stems from? Wow. Yes, yes, yes. As someone who works consistently in the community and as a community healer and community practitioner, I see that all the time and I hear the whole idea of radical rest and it's revolutionary for Black women to rest. And whenever I hear that, I, you know, at first I'm like, yes, it is. This is radical. It's revolutionary. It's hard for us to rest. But as I'm looking at it from the lens or the mirror of uh, Matthew 11, where it is engaging us as, uh, you know, believers uh, to maneuver ourselves into something different. It's a different kind of rest. And as I, I hear that in the community, I am realizing even for myself, my, my community self is I've been looking for rest in all the wrong places. <laughs> it's sort of like love, looking for rest in all the wrong places <laughs> or expecting, you know, spaces to be restful or that rest was only meant deep sleep when uh, really rest is a, not a place, but a person. And that person is, is God. It's, it's a, as a believer, it's Christ. My, my, my. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't figure. Hey. laughs> it's like this is what our mamas and grandmamas been trying to tell us you know once they got the, the got the memo it's like okay you know rest is go out and doing all these things that you think you're doing in the world and you know you're sitting and and, and taking you know going to the spa which is great you know self-care which is great you know getting more sleep which is great but I just remember my my, my mama telling me um you know that and I have a country mama, you know, straight. We grew up in church and all those kinds of things when I kind of got away from going to church regularly and really having a relationship. And she could see that. She was like, you're never going to find real rest until you find that rest um, that's in Christ when you really get back into those spaces of spiritual rest. And at the time, I didn't understand it. But boy, oh boy, you keep getting tired, Eva. You're going <laughs> to get tired enough. You go back to what your mama said, right? You go back to the kitchen uh, yes. table. Okay, I, I'm here. I'm listening now. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And um, I think about a scripture that we quote all the time from Isaiah 40. You know, those who wait on the Lord shall mount up on wings as eagles and they shall run and not faint and, <laughs> and they will soar. Like that's about God's rest because when we rest in God, you know, we get that inspired action. Like there's a difference between taking action and then actually leaning into God and the action that you're taking being inspired by God. Like that's really how I want to live life. But sometimes it seems so counterintuitive. You know, if you think about, if you go to social media, all the things that people say about what black women need to be doing, why we don't have partners. And then I really think about, okay, what does my God have to say? If I rest in Jesus and that inspired action and that inspiration, a lot of times, just kind of leads me to determine how I want to show up in the world and how I want to show up in community. Mm. So Salam, I want to ask you a question. You know, you talked about it. Hey, our, you know, when our mothers and our grandmothers and our aunts finally got this memo, right? Because I think I might've started getting the memo maybe two years ago. And I think I'm really, even now, you know how sometimes they say, hey, when you're sick, you don't know how sick you are until you've been healed. Yes. I think sometimes when we start this journey of realizing true rest in God, uh, we don't really realize how bad off we really were till we start getting a little bit of rest. 
But I wonder, do you have, just coming from your literary healers background, any tips for Black women today that are struggling around this concept um, that may be useful for our listeners? Absolutely. Um, one of the things is, as a literary healer is writing, reading. One of the things I used to see my mother doing at the end of the day was reading magazines. Nothing heavy, no like heavy books, just magazines that show beauty and sitting on the front porch in the sun. At the time, I thought, boring mother, you know, <laughs> or at the time I thought, you know, like you're saying now, social media, you're saying that we need to be out doing all these different things. So, but the example that I will give in, in tips is find what really, I love the whole idea of inspired, like this inspired rest that we get from, from Jesus. He's always already given us like the tenements, already given us the testimony, the the way the, the way that the world works is in order to do the inspired works and the social action that I've called you to do so that you will not faint, so that you can mount up like an eagle and soar, you must come to me and rest. Like it's so simple, but at the same time, so, so hard. So for me, some tips are writing. It causes you to sit down and be still. I remember my grandmother would say, go somewhere and sit down, right? And I thought, she's disciplined me, you know? And then I'm realizing, no, I think she was saying, get quiet. Go somewhere and get quiet with yourself. And that was just teaching that quietness and that stillness so that you can learn the lesson, so you can listen to maybe the thing that you need to be disciplined in. You can't do that if you're running all over the place. (laughs) <laughs> or if you're in in the in the in the you know in the cookie jar and getting all the cookies, right? You need to go somewhere and sit down. And for me, I would say that quietness comes through writing. <laughs> and so that's one tip I would say: get something to write with and journal your thoughts, and allow yourself to become inspired through the stillness that can only come through your spiritual practice with Christ. Our next communal voice this morning is Michelle Frazier. Michelle is a therapist at Work in Progress Counseling, which is a counseling center located in Alabama, has multiple locations in Alabama. And Michelle is going to be speaking from a therapist's perspective on Black women's rest. Well, Michelle, this morning we've been talking about true resting in Jesus and Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30 has been kind of our launching pad for this rest that Jesus invites us to have. And so the station that we're on today is majority black women listeners, middle age. My church is majority black women. And I found just in my ministry that sometimes it seems so revolutionary to tell Black women that it is okay to rest, like that everything doesn't fall on them. They don't have to put their hands on everything. And every time that they hear about a problem, it is not up to them to fix it. Have you seen cases of where it just seems so revolutionary to tell Black women to rest? And if you have, what do you think this kind of stems from? Um, I've definitely seen that. I would say the majority of the beautiful Black women that I see um, experience that. And I really think it comes from just hardships that we have endured as a people. And yes, we are resilient, but I think we get caught up in that. And the other part, I think, is core boundaries, to be honest with you. (laughs) we have um I think and maybe sometimes our understanding of scriptures might be um different from the intent in which they were written because Jesus called the weary to him to rest and even Jesus rest and that was revolutionary for me as someone who always worked two jobs and went to school and never and even did summer school So I, it's something I had to learn myself because I watched my mom and my aunt and my grandmothers, all hardworking women, um, and doing everything from everybody for everybody. And then at the end of the, the day or in the evening, you know, they're just exhausted. So it's that and feeling like we haven't done enough to earn a break with that's not true. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. What I've witnessed growing up, just seeing women, you know, serve and serve and serve and, and, you know, and their intent and the motive behind it is to serve, is to help. 
But sometimes um, I think I've learned from one of my friends, Jessica, she talks about from what fountain are you serving? And mm-hmm. so, you know, if you're you're tired, you are worn out, you know, is this really where Jesus wants us? And of course, you know, I, I don't think that's where he wants us. Right. Um, so I want to just ask you, what are some tips that you have for Black women, you know, if they're struggling in the area of resting or not being able to just stop signing themselves up for stuff and or they feel like issues in their family, everything is theirs to fix. What kind of tips do you have from a therapist perspective that our listeners could kind of lean into? Okay. I would say the first thing you need to do is examine your boundaries and look at everything that you have on your plate. If you are already working, you're a wife, you're a mom, you are active in your church, you're in other organizations, you run a business, look at what all you have on your plate. If you are, I know some of us are the rocks of our family. The first thing we need to do is learn how to say no and look at, you know, if what we're doing, yes, we were taught to serve and to help others. But if what we're doing is a detriment to ourselves, whether it be not taking time out to eat properly, get enough sleep, get any physical activity in, then we need to examine, okay, what needs to go? What do I need to say no to? And it's not out of being selfish, but I was studying the scripture you sent me and and it just came to me like rest is where you have your recovery. So if I don't give myself time to recover from all the things that I have to do, then I can't go out and be a good servant. I can't go out and help people the way that I need to if I'm worn out, stressed, as my pastor said, busted and disgusted. It's going to be harder to be a good servant for Jesus. And I was reading a book on boundaries and I, I see this scripture every day and just the understanding it gave me that particular day, it just blew my mind where it pointed out Jesus, you know, and the disciples served the multitude, you know, the fish and the loaves, and then he called them away to pray fast and meditate. That was them getting their rest. So I thought about it, if they just served continuously, nonstop, and they never had those periods to come away with Jesus and to pray, when did they get to relax? When did they get to recover? And that they're walking around doing this all on foot at the same time, all over Jerusalem, Bethlehem, you know. So it just showed me like God gave us the blueprint. Even he rested on the seventh day. So why are we not following the blueprint, if that makes sense? I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so the question I'll ask you before we wrap up is, do you have any other thoughts on this topic? Anything else that's coming to mind that you want to leave our listeners with today? A lot of people think therapy is for um, severe mental health issues or um, depression. Is Sometimes you may need that listening ear. Sometimes you may need help to examine things and build up your assertiveness to be able to say no therapy really can help with that and more of our people i'm trying we are working really hard to get us out in the community and and have people come into therapy to see okay it's great that you're strong it's great that you're the rock of the family but you also need to take care of yourself as well so i would suggest therapy if they do have trouble with that Thank you for listening to The Eva Melton Show. Find more inspiration at evamelton.com.